Today, my guest, Gurkha and SAS soldier Krishna Thapa, has just broken a world record by taking two amputees up to base camp Everest. For, for any human being living, we need to master our physical side, physical and mental and spiritual side. Uh, this is where everything you know starts for, for us a human. Krishna, first of all, it's an honor to have you sitting in my home. Thank you so much for coming. It's my pleasure and thank honor you. and thank you for having me here. Krishna, for my audience, can you tell me who you are and what you do now? So, yeah, I'm uh, Chris Tapa, uh, uh, born in Nepal, Himalayas, and joined the Gurkhas. And um, uh, after that, uh, joined the uh, SAS um, last um, almost 17 years with them. And last uh, four or five years, I've been leading the expedition for all the veteran, amputee, you know, PTSD, Parkinson, in all uh, blind. So, yeah. So this is what I'm focusing at the moment. How can we help? Wow, there is so much there already. What an incredible life, um, Krishna. Can I just take you back um, before we get on to what you're doing today? Um, if, you, if I can take you back to your, maybe your childhood or when you made that decision um, to join the Gurkhas. So I think obviously, you know, I think everyone kind of aware the, and especially in Nepal, uh, being a third world country and we have a huge history, uh, especially for the boys joining the Gurkhas is the dream come true. You know, I've been very lucky and fortunate uh, to join the Gurkhas. Um, yeah. And then the, because obviously, uh, because of, it's, I think the culture and society we grown up, we tend to have a lot more pressure from our parents, our community as well. You know, and then also the reward if you join the girl has pretty much, you know, we have uh, pretty much made your dream. But not only did you join the Gurkhas, you went on then um, to be selected for the SAS and passed the SAS selection. What was your journey like in the SAS? And I know you, you, you're still serving now, I should say, as well. Yeah. So it's, uh, to be honest, it's, it's uh, fantastic and never had a single day regrets. Uh, it's, it's probably one of the most rewarding and enlightening thing for me happen, you know, because the, in our life, uh, uh, you know, what we always dream for and drive, we, you know, thrive for. And the, you know, tr uh, for me, it's maybe transcending our limitation and mind thought, the boy from Nepal, to you know to the uh, to the UK and you know work with the SF and then that mindset and the life is is uh, phenomenal. And Krishna, as I understand it, you're one of the first Gurkhas to go through to the SAS. Yes. How 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 did that feel? It's it's incredible and it's been uh, you know like a uh, dream come true. And then the uh, sometime I think we. We, you know, choose our path, and the, you know, if you, if you, if you are a good human, and we can uh, achieve our dream, even, even, even out of our limit, and uh, that's what I, you know, realize myself, um, you know, just being a good human, and then the, you know, people will always support you, and then uh, it's been great. How how did you face the physical side of things? Because I'm hearing you talk a lot about the spiritual, which is uh, which is beautiful. How did you face the physical or get over the physical side of um, SAS selection? I think to me is uh, you know most important thing is the uh, obviously for for any human being living, we need to master our physical side, physical and mental and spiritual side. And either we are aware or not, how much we are aware with our spiritual side. Uh, this is where everything, you know, start for for us a human. But mental and uh, mental and physical side is we can perceive, we can feel, and we can touch. But spiritual path is only we have to be quiet. You know, mm -hmm. we have to be silent and then to understand and observe. You know, and we can actually change our thought and vision uh, through the mindset, through the physical body, 
if we are, you know, like within very deeper understanding ourselves. Um, just on that note, and, I, and I'd like to come back to spirituality as well. Um, but if if I think of um, veterans, the SAS, Gurkhas, I guess spirituality doesn't come to mind. I, I, I think you think of war and fighting. How does the two meet? So uh, to me, it's the um, uh, uh, you know if like you know if I uh, if I wasn't able to tap into my spiritual path, I wouldn't be living here today uh, and talking with you. So the uh, either we are aware of that's the only only um, uh, answer I found is how much we are aware of. There is definitely a spiritual path. Without spirit and soul, there is no living being, basically. But there is a subtle energy, like uh, a subtle energy with the mental and then the sense perception and then the physical. But in order to understanding the you know subconscious uh, energy and subconscious uh, level of awareness, we need to have like I said, we need to be quiet and understanding ourselves uh, more sort of. Uh, subjectively focus, you know, within ourselves. What I mean subjectively is, are we uh, focus enough with our breathing? Are we focus enough with, you know, like uh, even, you know, closing our eyes? And so many thousand times we close our eyes and breathe thousand times, but have we ever consciously, you know, try to focus those things? This is the only way, what we call is the, uh, you know, tantric way in Nepalese mm -hmm. or Himalayas uh, spiritual term is to understand and using a tool to be deeper in yourself, go, go in ourselves. Did that make you a better soldier? 100%. I think the, like I said, the only way to out is in. Then the more you understanding about yourself, and then, and then that is the only way we can understand other, or other, understand the situation or environment to conceive. Conceive is only through you. You know, so if you have more understanding and you became a better human and or you can master your sense perception to, you know, like for whatever situation we are. Did, did you always um, feel like this Krishna or did you learn something more about yourself in the journey that you made as a Gurkha and then going through the SAS? So, um, you know, I think so many situation we've been through not only me every one of us been in the situation not realizing how lucky we are being alive and experience things uh, you know experience through our sense perception we all always you know uh, perceive through our senses not you know like what we see but not you know who is the observer and you know, who is the one seeing so that is you know the fundamental is to being alive and then perceive you know, and then understanding that and analyzing, you know, through the spiritual path is, um, you know, it's great gift to me. And without doubt, you know, I think, uh, obviously through my own Himalayan grown-up culture, through the Gurkhas and through the, you know, working with the SAS definitely have given me the opportunity to different environment. And now it's time for me to reflect on, you know, on a kind of mirror and then try to, you know, contract and conceive within myself. Um, you must have you must have had challenging times in your career. What are some of the challenging maybe is there a moment that sticks in your mind um, that you can talk about? Yeah, absolutely I think there are so many uh, moments you know I think maybe, uh, one of the greatest moments is for me is uh, intrigue is the uh, on the war time in Iraq. That's actually what I, you know, reflect. Uh, um, so uh, went to the into the tar uh, area, and then uh, you know, like one of the dog girl, thirteen years girl, come and hold my hand. A little girl. A little, little girl, and and I hold my hand and cry, and then I and then I was like, why why you why you are doing whatever you're doing, um, and then because whatever. I think whatever we we perceive, you know, are good or bad. I let's say I perceive him as a very bad person, human, and for our perspective is oh, sees sees our father, sees our God, you know, and then sees a leader of the community, 
then that's that's where I intrigue for me, you know, this our perception lies to us. You know, whatever I see is through my own perception, but our perception is um, uh, conditioned through our culture, society, wherever we grown up, but it's not truth. You know, for example, um, you know, we our our what we see, sun rays, sun, you know, sunset every day is only through our visual perception. Mm-hmm. But actually, some neither you know rays or neither set you know always shining throughout. So that is the different level of understanding of knowledge, not to only through the perception. That's what I first first thing I realize is actually our own perception lied to us. You know, then start asking a lot of questions. Does it serve you though in that situation that your perception does lie? Because I. I guess, and look, I've never been in this situation, but seeing a little girl, um, and I guess you were fighting against her father or whoever it was, um, but as a, as a soldier, I guess you have to take a line. Yeah, 100%, because that is the uh, difference between the job, you know, what you do. And also, one of the interesting uh, thing what I found is the in, the in the modern world, like, let's say, uh, 80%, uh, of the population is on the medication, and then uh, and then they are suffering, but not many of the uh, you know like population suffering through the physical, uh, you know through the physical pain or you know, someone poking you or someone is shooting you. Those more let's say eighty percent is on suffering within within ourselves, but I think uh, being doing on the job, being a soldier. Uh, you know, those are the people who are putting their physical pain, you know, under the fire, under the, you know, to make the country and the people loved one behind to make them safe. So that is the, I think, job someone has to do. Otherwise, you know, people we're living here, now we're living and talking, maybe we'll be in a different situation, maybe docking and try to save our life. So definitely, I think that's the job and uh, we, someone has to do it. Completely. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, what we we couldn't do without our military um, forces. How do you, I mean, what you just described there, the little girl, um, how do you get over things in your mind if you have challenging times? Is there a a way you sort of look at it and reset your own mind? Every day. So, uh, like I say, I think what I, one of my realizing is the, um, for any living being, you know, if you are just one-sided, for example, what I mean is like if we not have a uh, cognitive behavior like spiritual, physical, and mental, any time we can, you know, drive our mental is always going. Or how can be better than other? How can be richer? How can be, you know, do good? It's great, great to have vision because otherwise I'll still be standing here because I, you know. But at the same time, how we, how much we aware within ourselves, you know, how much I'm willing to understanding my spirit of a true soul, you know, am I willing to do this one with my soul and heart? Do you think you need suffering in order to understand that? So, basically, every expression we have, every thought, every word we uh, we come out from our mouth is a is is a it's a suffer. Yeah. But, you know, like the, because it's all come down to survive. You know, our human body, man organs like heart, lungs, eyes, is only about surviving. And then anything to do survive is our thought processes come out with that body organs is to survive us. That means we are already suffering. That's why we come back to last question how much we have quiet, how much we are silenced. You know, being silenced and quiet is the only way to understand our own body and organ, what they're reflecting and going through, and then connect with our spiritual and soul. Wow, interesting. So everything that comes up is a point of suffering. Yeah, every thought. Every thought going, you know, only thought come subconsciously. Then we, you know, bring up the point, whatever is... But sometimes I have happy thoughts. <laughs> I have happy thoughts. Uh, well, a lot of the time. So that is because what is happy and sadness for you is different to me. 
Yes. Isn't it? Because wherever we've grown up, like I said, exactly same incident in whatever we think that guy was, he was treated as a Lord and God in that community. What I mean is the all our happiness and sadness is conditioned right. wherever okay. we are and whatever we live and whatever we love to do. But end of the day, if you go deep down, every expression is a part of survival. Survival is part of suffering. So just to change a little bit the area we're going down, um, can you tell me a little bit more about your work on the mountains? Yes, so uh, just back from Himalayas, so I'm involving at the moment uh, three different uh, um, expeditions. So um, Harry, Justin and Paul. So Harry and Justin are double amputees above knees. Uh, they just both have a, on their own record. So Justin being the highest, he been on ski on 6,000 meter. So Harry just been to the Everest Space Camp and Iskar dive, uh, um, you know. So both of these gentlemen yeah. don't have legs? No, above knees. Above the knees. Yeah. And you took them to Everest yeah. uh, Base Camp. Yeah. As I understand that, that was a world record. Yes, so Harry had a whole record, the first double amputees above knees. Um, Everest Base Camp and then uh, Skydive and uh, Justin had the highest uh, 6,000 meter and then uh, Ski Down. Wow, well firstly congratulations, Thank that's you. amazing. I'm sure you must have changed those gentlemen's lives. Um, uh, amazing for them, uh, what a fantastic effort. Um, what makes you want to help people? Because you're, you're doing this a lot now. Um, are you focusing in on veterans particularly? Mm, I think for me is, uh, you know, uh, once I realize whole life is, uh, we focus on all the time, you know, taking in. And, and uh, then once we start, how can we give, how can we give the, you know, to achieve someone else's dream? You know, I think we all have ability and weakness, but I think it's great to focus on our strength. And uh, with that, how can we thrive and transcend or to achieve someone else's dream with, with the support uh, would be great. How do you physically do it, though? Are you actually helping the men up the, the mountain or is it more on the mind? Uh, so from my perspective, is uh, like I said, the only way, whatever we project, it has to come from inside. But the uh, guys has to do the hard work. They, they obviously, you know, they are, they are basically crawling. For example, a f normal five hours walk is maybe 18 hours work for them. Wow. Like in, 18, in a way, it's crawling, uh, you know, like on their belly book, you know, like, yeah. Have, have they got prosthetics? Yeah, they got the prosthetic, but because of the train, you know, like ice climbing mm. and then, the, you know, like ice and it's hard to, they have those. Uh, sort of version of uh, uh, walking or climbing prosthetics, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think the... Uh, and other thing I really, really interesting I found is the... Uh, those uh, person who is a little bit kind of, you know, like differently able or have some sort of situation or ha had encounter with the death or the some, you know, event I found there are a lot more subtle understanding of the spiritual past than the normal, uh, or we call it normal, you know, being, I guess. I'm really interested in that. So, so what you're saying is, and sorry, I'm paraphrasing this. So people that have been close to mortality, to their own death, yeah. I guess either through war or through losing limbs yeah. or have a greater sense of their spirituality than say somebody who, who, who has never, like for example, I've never touched wood, never really been close to, to death. Yes, 100%. That, that's kind of my own, my own kind of uh, you know, resource and my own understanding because the situation I've been through, the realizing the, uh, you know, like a, you know, a lot of us like people don't ever think we're gonna die and maybe someone else die. You know, that's the, that's the way of being surviving. That's, uh, that's human art. But how can we go beyond our perceived, you know, than to overcome is that is to uh, basically thinking about on our death. 
So what, yeah, I was going to say, what should we do then? Say, I'm, I'm a normal person. I, I don't like that word. <laughs> but uh, in order for me to transcend and go to that next stage, are you saying that it, I should imagine my own death? Not, not necessarily that. I think that for me, it's because the culture I grew up in the Himalayas and in Nepal, we, 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 we have a traditional and culture to be in that certain environment not, you know, kind of uh, physical, emotionally thinking about it, but subconsciously, you know, that environment we can create and just be aware, awareness. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about it, you know, um, uh, we are, we are living and, you know, we are, you know, living and dying every second, mm-hmm. with every breath, you know, inhalation is living and exhalation is dying. So, but that's why we, and we are not aware of that, you know, every heartbeat is a sign of living and death. So the day we born was, we start dying, basically. Wow. Gosh, it sounds quite depressing. Yeah, yeah I see your life as one of, of joy and giving. Absolutely. Now you're talking, that's the only way we can, you know, enjoy and enhance is to have that awareness. You know, it's not saying, oh, we're going to die, but just have that, you know, the one way of letting go, you know. One way of, like the Buddhist saying is the, you know, always uh, the philosophy, the Himalayas, it's what they're saying is they always walk in the middle path, you know, don't don't go left or right. Or what that means is don't ever be, you know, over, over dream, don't ever be over happy, and over joyful, but don't ever over be you know sad and then you know like you know uh, you know like overcome with an in any situation because how can we walk in the middle path or how can we be you know some of the stuff we can't hold it just let it go you know just being in that moment is that the understanding of awareness within ourselves one of the easiest tool is to like I say we you know like forty thousand times we breathe every day but we never actually consciously breathe. But if we not breathe for a couple of minutes, we're dead. We're dead. So those are the uh, tools. But actually, it's not the spiritual path. It's not the understanding the subconscious mind. This is one of the tools which can be you know, path to inwards rather than outwards. Do you think this is what's given you your mental strength to get through things like the SAS selection, to get through your... Um, various tours in Afghanistan, Iraq. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I think for me, it's, that's why I'm saying if I uh, didn't have that understanding of my own culture through the grown up, obviously I was very fortunate to, you know, grown up in the Himalayas with the spiritual and philosophy. You know, like uh, every morning have a cold shower, you know, and then worship the god, worship the tree, and worship the sky. And but by then didn't have understanding. But now is for me, it's the, you know, with, with the event happen in my life to reflect what are the signs behind, you know, what are the reasons behind for we, we do, you know, that uh, traditional and culture is actually and, you know, uh, being present about a death situation and going through isolation. That's all, this is actually our culture, thousand years. For those people that, that obviously that don't have your culture, that um, uh, not born in Nepal, um, maybe not Buddhist, but are going through um, tough times, they have yeah. limitations, whatever that may be, and that, that, that goes for everybody in life. What advice would you give them? I mean, you just mentioned something there that's very topical. You, you said cold showers. That, that's that's a quite an easy, not an easy thing to do, but it's one tool. Is there any other tools that you would suggest? Yes, I think uh, definitely uh, every day if you focus your perception, like for example, what I mean is perception is have you ever, let's say every day when you wake up, just, you know, mindful of closing your eyes, you know, mindful what you're hearing, what is coming through your, you know, through your heart and soul and just, you know, have you ever uh, considered and listened to the heartbeat, you know, Every living being is 1.5 billion heartbeat, uh, you know, for, you know, generally. But we never aware one single heartbeat. Without a single heartbeat, we are, you know, dead. 
But those are the things to realize and an abstract from a lot of things which goes in our mind and what people think, what people do, because we never, you know, focusing our energy and our emotion somewhere else. But can we focus inside within us? And that will eventually change your perception the way we you see and be quiet and understand your own body is the only way of understanding the other. Wow, that's quite a lot to take in. If anyone's watching, I'm sure they'll be rewinding and listening to that. I'm certainly going to listen to that one again. Um, Krishna, what is your quest? Do you see now that you have a mission in life? Yes, yeah, so my realization now is that how can I, you know, with the, I realize our life is very limited and uh, anything to we, we can hold purpose of our life which is, should be every living being, you know, purpose or the quest should be how can we enhance ourselves first and understanding our spiritual, physical and mental well-being and then the, the reason is how can we then enhance and transcend the limitation with those who need the most and I think this is what we need to focus. Coming to sort of my final questions, what are your greatest life lessons? Uh, greatest life lesson for me is uh, just be aware and conscious we are living and life. And is, if there's one thing that you would say to your younger self, if you could go back and give a piece of advice to little Krishna, what would that be? Uh, always drive and have a great vision until the age of 24 and then dance and have a mission after that. Dance and have a mission after that. I love that. Krishna, look, thank you so That's much for being a guest on my show. Namaste. Yeah. This has been amazing. Thank oh, you. Oh, great. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, there's a new interview out every Monday. So hit subscribe and like, and you'll get it straight into your inbox.